the famous adventures of Mr. Magoo. It's showtime again, good people. And tonight, you will see an acting tour de force that comes along only once in a lifetime. The story's little Snow White, and she meets seven dwarves, and I play. <laughs> now get this, all seven dwarves. <laughs> Modesty forbids me telling you the talent required to do such acting. And you might say it requires a bit of a split personality seven times. Now, in this story, as you know, there's a mean old queen that talks to a magic mirror. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Now, here, I'll show you how she did it. Since we don't have a magic mirror, we'll <laughs> use this one on my dressing room table. Looking glass upon the wall, who is the fairest of them all? Queen of loveliness, I say to you, the fairest of all is Mr. Magoo. Oh, by George, Mira, you embarrass me. I may be talented, but I'm really not that pretty. Oh, oh no such flattery. Oh, oh, well, oh, yes, indeed. Once upon a time, back in the days of wizardry and magic, there lived in a slightly enchanted forest seven little dwarfs whose work it was to dig underground among the mountains for gold. Their names were Axelrod, who was the accountant. <laughs> Let the X equal the gold, and Y equal the cart. Y plus Y equals Y. <laughs> Multiplied by 10 squared, aren't you? <laughs> and George, who was the dreamer. Hey, dragon, George! Now, come on! Get to work! Then there was Dexter, who was the legal expert. Now, according to the law of the land, no man may claim a claim that has not been claimed by the claimer who filed a claim. And Cornelius, whom one might consider somewhat of a logician, well, now, as a wise old man once said, <laughs> all the glitters may have been polished. And Bartholomew, the inventive wizard. Abracadabra, zippity zone, change these rocks to solid gold. <laughs> and last but not least, there were Eustace and Ferdinand, who, alas, had no special talents. But somebody had to do the dirty work. Now it happened that in a magnificent castle just east of this forest lived a lovely little princess named Snow White. Snow White was lonely, for her father, the king, was kept busy with his hunts and wars and other kingly things and was rarely at home. As for the queen, who was Snow White's stepmother, she was a beautiful woman but so vain and self-centered that she could not bear to be surpassed in beauty by anyone. Looking glass upon the wall, who is the fairest of us all? Queen of loveliness, you are the fairest of them all by far. <laughs> now, in another royal castle on the west side of the forest lived a young and very handsome prince named Valor. Prince Valor was a dreamer. <gasps> On the other side of the forest, in another window, Snow White was dreaming too. And because over a slightly enchanted forest many things are possible, the two visions met in a tender moment. The prince knew now that his dream princess did truly exist, and he knew that he must set out at once to find her. And from that moment on, Snow White knew that she loved and was loved, and she grew more beautiful day by day, until one day, when the queen went to her looking glass. Looking glass upon the wall, who is fairest of us all? Queen. You are full fair, tis true, but Snow White fairer is than you. 
You lie. Snow White is but a bony child. You lie. You lie. You lie. But the queen knew full well that the mirror did not lie. And biding her time until the king was safely out of the kingdom, she summoned forth a huntsman and ordered him to take Snow White into the forest and slay her and bring back her heart as proof that the deed had been done. Do not take my life. I will go away into the forest and never go home again. I promise you that. Mm, heaven help me if the queen should find out, but away with you then, child. Oh, thank you. Deeper and deeper into the forest, Snow White ran. Wait and see. I can run no more. That evening, the seven little dwarfs returned home, tired from their hard work in the mine. Oh, sure, sure. Now, if X equals the water in this pitcher, and Y equals the capacity in this bowl, George, you forgot to empty the wash bowl this morning. I thought I did empty it. Oh, you really must do something about your memory. And your soap is melted. And the towels are wet. Oh, too bad, too bad. However, as the great wise man once said, a soap in a bowl is worth two in the dish. I want you the other way around him. Now, just a moment there, brother. This evidence is absolutely circumstantial. Oh, that reminds me. Anyone for supper? But supper was no better. The bread tray was empty. Some of the porridge bowls were empty. And all of the mugs had been drained. Oops! Except one. The dwarfs realized that someone had been in their little cottage while they were away. And perhaps that someone might still be in the house. Har! What is it, brother? <laughs> Look here. Who is she? Why is she here? Be careful. She might be a witch in disguise. Possibly. Or maybe she's one of her spies. As the great wise man said, she is fair to behold. But perhaps she is after our gold. She might possibly cast some dread spell. That would certainly dry up our well. To my mind, she seems gentle and lovely and mild. Oh, by dragons. She looks like a child. Ow! <gasps> Ow! I meant no harm, only you did look so funny. <laughs> Are you bewitched? Oh, no. <laughs> well, then, as a wise old man once said, he who laughs first laughs last. <laughs> I want you to get the other way around him. The main issue, as I see it, is that this young lady has 
disobeyed the law. <laughs> no, 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 wait, no, no, yeah, there, there's no need for that. No one will hurt you, little girl. Please forgive me. It was wrong of me to come into your house, but I was so tired and I had no place to go. <laughs> but tell me, uh, have you have you lost your way home? I have no more home. I may never return there again. And so Snow White told the seven little men all about herself and about her stepmother who wished her dead. And the dwarves felt badly for the poor little princess and vowed that they would help her. But how? Now, uh, think hard, brothers. Come now. We must find a way to help this poor child. I know. I might cast a spell upon the queen and turn her into a worm. Now, here I think I have the solution. Uh, we will let X equal Snow White and Y equal the queen. Oh, why can't she stay here with us? We need someone to do our cooking and washing and mending and to look after us. And the princess needs a home, so we all need each other. By dragons, George. Yes, I think you have it. And indeed, the new arrangement worked out very happily for everyone. The little cottage in the Glen was filled with the special love of people who needed one another. But there was someone else who needed Snow White. Prince Valor, never for a moment losing sight of his determination to find his dream princess, he searched the country far and wide until at last, he was directed to the castle where once Snow White had lived. Arise, Prince Valor, and tell me to what do I owe the honor of your presence? My queen, I have come to seek the hand of your lovely daughter. I have no daughter. Snow White is not your daughter? She was my stepdaughter. Snow White is dead. She wandered too far into the forest and was uh, devoured by wild animals. The Princess Snow White lives. I tell you, she is dead. Oh no, my queen. Snow White lives and she waits for me and I will find her. Looking glass upon the wall, who is the fairest of us all? Queen. Thou art of beauty rare, but Snow White, living in the glen with the seven little men, is a thousand times more fair. I must find her. I must find Snow White and destroy her at once! Unaware of the danger that lay ahead, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs led a happy life in the little cottage in the Forest Glen. Never have I had so fine a tunic. Nor I. Well, as a wise old man once said... You are Cornelius. Why would I not be Cornelius? I was Cornelius when I went to bed last night. <laughs> but, but you have an E on your tunic. E is for Eustace. No matter. I, I don't mind. But I put the initials on your tunics so that I would be able to tell you apart. And the truth is that they are a bit nearsighted. <laughs> oh, I do love all of you. And I'm so happy to be here. Demon of demons, appear unto me. My wealth is the prize, a boon is my plea. <laughs> What now, evil daughter? What be thy boon? I would beg aid to destroy Snow White. Spirits of evil and all that be hideous, into the darkness of the night. Go then, and put an end to Snow White. <laughs> It was so dreadful. She crawled to a demon, and, and he came out of a tree. And... It, it was but a nightmare. Oh, but 
Oh, it was so real. <laughs> Suppose I cast a spell and drive the evil dreams away. As the wise man once said, where would we be here without dreams? Sleeping peacefully. My dragons, anyone could have a nightmare with that shutter banging in his ear. George, go outside and nail that shutter down. <laughs> yes, brother. Now then, Snow White, be down with you and close your little eyes. <sighs> You are all so good and kind to me. You make me feel so warm and safe. Like, like being wrapped in a blanket of love. <laughs> yes. My dragons, your eyes are open. Now then, that's better. Lullaby, lullaby. Sleep sweetly, my dearest one. <laughs> by a breeze and a gentle sigh, while golden cobwebs of dreams are spun. Lullaby, lullaby, lullaby. By dragons, George, get out of that water. This isn't Saturday night. <laughs> Snow White sent the seven dwarfs off to their work cheerfully and set about her morning tasks. Lullaby, lullaby, la -da 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 -da. <clears throat> Good morning, my pretty. Oh. Who are you? What do you want? <laughs> Heavens, I'll not bite you. I'm Bertha the Peddler. I come every spring to visit the dwarfs, and they buy what they need from me. The dwarfs are not at home. But, uh, perhaps you'll buy something? N no, I, I... But, dearie, I have come a very long way, and I'm very tired and thirsty. Could you not come back another time? Oh, very well, then. But wait. I am sorry. You are tired. Do come inside and rest. Ah, my pretty. You are a kindly child. Uh, these new laces are small payment indeed for your kindness, my dear. I want you to have this gift. I do thank you, but I can lace my bodice myself. Allow a poor peddler the pleasure of attending so lovely a creature as the princess Snow White. How do you know my name? <gasps> and now, Snow White, my sweet, my pretty, now you no longer are the fairest. <laughs> Did you hear that? Well, I heard something. I have a feeling that, that Snow White needs us. Hey, so do I. Well, my dragons, what are we waiting for? The seven dwarfs lost no time in returning to their cottage. But alas, it was too late. Poor Snow White lay pale and still on the floor. We should have taken better care of her. What will living be like without her? <laughs> the rest of you may stand about doing nothing. You no. Know? Oh, 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 why not I? If only you could cast a spell that would return her to us alive and well. Could you do that? How do you know that I cannot? Try hard, Bartholomew, and perhaps our love and your wizardry can do the trick together. Talisman amulet for him, something special for Syria. Mm. That demon is fly with Ganesha's spell. Far from the wizard, all oh, as a. Oh, help! Quench the fire! Quench the fire! Get some water, George. Uh, water? Oh, yes, yes, I will. <laughs> Well, by dragons, George! I am probably the worst wizard in the history of wizardry. I should be dropped from the road, and I should... Oh, my goodness! 
What have you done to my nice, clean floor? <laughs> There's no way. I see her. I see her with my own two eyes. As a wise man once said, believing is, is seeing. Alive. Alive as she can be. Of course I'm alive. Bartholomew, if I were king, you should be knighted. By dragon, you are a wizard, the best in the world. That night, there was much rejoicing at the cottage of the seven dwarfs, for there was much to rejoice about. And then, when everyone was tired, Bartholomew, the undisputed hero of the day, took advantage of his newfound fame as a wizard to perform bold feats of magic for the amusement of the princess, Snow White. Yeah, abracadabra, zippity zap, here's a chicken right out of the cap. Ah, ah something went wrong. Oh, but brother, the egg should have materialized into a live chicken. Well, as a wise old man once said, if at first you do not succeed, it may be that you do not have the talents of a mother hen. <laughs> that one I made up. Do try again, Bartholomew. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, here, this one is better. Now, now you, you, you will see. Abracadabra, zippity zap. Here's a chicken right out of the cap. Oh, here it is! <laughs> a live chicken. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 no chicken ever looked like that. A uh, green chicken is better than none, <laughs> I say. I uh, think it uh, not a chicken. Oh, it is just a baby. Yes, it be. <laughs> a baby what? I have no idea, but may I keep it, please? Hi, George! You little darling. I shall call you Blazer. Somewhere deep in the forest, a weary prince stopped to rest in his search for his dream princess and to dream. That night, Snow White slept peacefully and dreamed of living happily ever after. But happily ever after was not yet possible, for there was still that wicked queen. Looking glass upon the wall, who is now fairest of us all? Queen, thou art of beauty rare, but Snow White living in the glen with the seven little men is a thousand times more fair. Snow White lives! Once again I have failed, but never more, never more. For I swear by everything that is unholy that before another moon has passed, the Princess Snow White shall breathe her last. Oh, yeah, Mary, oh, for walking about with a hole in your toe. Oh, by dragons, if that isn't beautiful. A rosebud, as if by magic. It is embroidery work. I was taught to do it by the royal embroiderer. Well, as a wise old man once said, a stitch in time saves embarrassment, that's it. <laughs> Boy, I shall be the only one in this entire forest with a rosebud on his toe, by dragon. Oh, you are all darling, and I love you very much. Thank you for everything. <laughs> thank us for what? We want to thank you for bringing so much happiness into our lives, and we hope that you will always remain here with us, always. Demon of demons, appear unto me. 
my wealth is the prize, a boon is my plea. <laughs> Is it this time? Snow White still lives to gnaw at my heart, Master. Heart, daughter? You have no heart. <laughs> I would beg aid to destroy Snow White. Very well, evil one. But of this time you fail. Call on me no more. Spirits of evil and all the big idiots into the darkness of the night. Go then and put an end to Snow White. <laughs> What is it? Who speaks so of my Princess Snow White? Ah, it was you, my friend. Certainly, you have not learned to speak. <laughs> Who are you? Why do you laugh? I am Zelda the Gypsy, and I laugh at you, Prince Barrow. You, you know my name? I know everything. I see it all in my crystal ball. Do you? Do you truly see all? Oh, yes, my son, I do indeed. Would you not like to see the princess for whom you search the forest? Would you not like to see Snow White? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> How eagerly the child reaches for the bauble. Here, see your beloved. Remarkable. You are a remarkable woman, Zelda. Then tell me, you must know, where is she? How do I find her? Cross my palm with gold. This and more, if you tell me truly. Go far to the east where the sun is high. Then over the hills where the eagles fly. Turn once to the left and thrice to the right. Then straight to the oven that shelters Snow White. <laughs> Run! You will never see your princess. For by the time you have found the right way, Snow White will be no more. Snow White slept peacefully, but the dwarfs heard and came to see that the princess was all right. You see how, how sweetly she sleeps. <laughs> like an angel. What if someone should take her from us? By dragons, no one had better try. I should say not. According to the law, Snow White belongs to us. What law is that? Why, it's um, um, uh, finders keepers, losers weepers. That is what the law is. She may fall in love. Indeed she loves us. No, that is different, brother. In what way, uh, legally speaking, uh, uh, love is love? But in Snow White's future, there may be a young man with whom she will fall in love, and then perhaps she, she'll, she will marry. Of course, he will be no ordinary young man. No, no, he must be wealthy. A king or a prince must he be. And he must be handsome. As tall and straight as a tree. He must be clever. As sharp as a two-edged sword. He must have courage. Yet be loving with the one he adored. He'll move mountains. Out with witches. he walk through fire. Offer riches. <laughs> there is nothing that can praise his mighty might. But he is not good enough for our Snow White. No. <laughs> but with the morning sun, all of the doubts and worries of the night before had vanished and the dwarfs left for their work in good spirits. Goodbye, darling. Have a lovely day, and please do eat all of your luncheon. Yeah! Oh, dear. 
let me help you. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah. And as for you, my sweet little firebrand, you must either stop kissing people or learn to hold your breath when you do. There, you have it. Very good. No, Blazer. You may breathe now. There, there. You shall learn. As the wise old man once said, practice makes perfect. Well, come along now. We have work to do. Oh, oh now, dear, I startled you. Foolish old gypsy Zelda. I should have made some sound that I should have. Would you like uh, to have a gypsy song? Or perhaps a dance? Oh, thank you very much. But I really have work to do. Oh, dear me. That is why I love being a gypsy. Do you have a young man? I do not. But you do. He is a prince, I believe, who even now is on his way to seek your hand in marriage. How do you know that? Ah, Zelda knows. Come. Would you not like to see him for yourself? Gaze into my crystal ball. Oh, it is. It is he. <laughs> ah, yes. He will be here before many days have passed. Then it is true what I dream. Ah, yes. Young dreams do come true. And young love casts its spell over all who come near it. Even Gypsy Zelda. And you are so pretty, my dear. Come, let Zelda share in your happiness. Let your prince see you wearing this comb. Oh, it is beautiful. Then it is yours, Snow White. Oh. <laughs> quick action of Blazer, the little dragon. It might have been the end of poor Snow White, for the little fella flew like the wind to fetch the seven dwarfs, and at last, they understood and hurried home. And as the dwarfs lifted Snow White, the poisoned comb fell from her hair. Snow White revived. I... I cannot imagine what happened to me. One moment I was talking to the dearest gypsy lady, and the next... <laughs> what gypsy lady? I believe her name was Zelda. She gave me this. Oh, dear, it must have fallen from my hair. Oh, thank you, Blazer. My beautiful comb. <laughs> no, 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 little Snow White. There's something strange about this comb. It is poison. At first, we had a peddler woman's gift of laces so tightly knotted that the breath was taken from little Snow White. And now, and now the gift of a gypsy woman, a poison comb. Suppose we let X equal a peddler and Y equal a gypsy. And X I equal me equals a two and over the but <laughs> two times 38 and into the heat. By dragons, I have it. What? Your stepmother, the wicked queen, she has found you and means to put an end to you. Where are my potions? Where are my cauldrons? I'll cast such a spell. Well, as the wise old man once said, never look a gift horse in the mouth lest he bite your head off. That's what he said. Oh, a dastardly attempt at murder, if I ever knew of one. Why, this wicked woman should be put in irons and thrown in the deepest dungeon. She should... Oh, my goodness. Hey, what are we to do? Hey, surely the wicked queen will discover that Snow White still lives, and she will be back. <laughs> Indeed, it was quite evident that this would be the case. But the seven dwarfs planned to take no further chances with the life of Snow White. When they left for work, Bartholomew remained behind to keep his cauldrons and magic incantations going throughout the day. And the dwarfs were right, for the wicked queen took no chances. 
queen. Thou art of beauty rare, but Snow White is a thousand times more fair. This time I shall call upon stronger powers, and Snow White shall die, though it cost my own life. I swear it! And the queen locked herself in a secret chamber and called upon all that was evil in the underworld to come to her aid. Flame of fury burn, bells of evil toll. Rulers of the darkness, I offer you my souls. And the evil cry of the wicked queen was answered. Her disguise was that of an aged hag a foil, an apple, perfect to behold, filled with certain death. It was past the time of mourning that the seven little dwarfs usually departed for their work. Still, they found many reasons to delay their departure. Um, oh, my kerchief, I, I do believe that I have forgotten it. Why, George, is this not your kerchief? Oh, show it is, and I would... Oh, can you fancy that? Fancy that, indeed. And where are you going? Uh, I think I forgot to make up my bed. Uh, mathematically speaking, it... mm, Your bed is beautifully made up, Axelrod. Oh, is it now? Oh, fancy that. I I shall have to see that I change the statistics on bed making. It's uh, eight and two over three. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, there now. I do have to get another kerchief. Now, see here. What is all of this nonsense? Are you afraid to leave me? Is that it? Well, I think you're all behaving like a bunch of sillies. Now, all of you scat, or I shall never get my work done. You rest assured I shall work my strongest magic. How do the four-headed glowworm? A uh, wishbone from a try and miss. Oh, yes, I know those essence of a little fig wart that we all grow. Now then, Bartholomew the Wizard conjures a spell! again, tender-hearted little Snow White was in the power of the wicked queen. She gave her comfort and food and drink, and she was rewarded with a gift, a beautiful, shiny red apple. My pretty, the dwarfs will not be able to bring you back to life again. <laughs> now, who is the fairest of us all? <laughs> Why did we leave her? <laughs> I felt danger in the air before I <laughs> We all felt it. There's no use logging the cottage after the wicked queen has left. Now it is my fault every bit. I never really was a good wizard. Poor little Snow White. 
How lonely life will be without her. <laughs> now at last, the wicked queen heard the words that made her content. Queen of loveliness, you are the fairest of them all by far. But so beautiful did Snow White remain that the dwarfs could not bring themselves to bury her. So they fashioned a casket of clear glass and placed her in it. And it was thus that poor Prince Valor finally found his beloved. Oh, Snow White, my beloved, I have found you too late. Please, I have searched long for my beloved Snow White. I love her with all my heart. Please, let me take her home to be with me always. We believed it, that Snow White loved you, and that you love her, and, and so, by dragons, very well take her. A strange thing happened. Snow White, having dislodged a bit of poisoned apple from her throat, sat up, alive and well. What... what is happening? Why are we all here? Snow White! Oh, no! Oh, my dragon! Snow White, my darling. The wedding of Prince Valor and Princess Snow White was held at the royal castle on the west side of the slightly enchanted forest with much pomp and splendor. It was a beautiful and touching occasion indeed. However, in another castle on the east side of the forest, looking glass upon the wall, who is fairest of us all? A bride with beauty beyond compare is Snow White, the fairest of the fair. You lie! You lie! Snow White is dead! She is dead, I say! Dead! Dead! <laughs> so once your beauty reigned, your ugliness is now disdained. <laughs> Never again was the wicked queen seen or heard from. But suddenly... By dragons, Bartholomew, I, I wish you wouldn't do that. I, I, uh, do, but Bartholomew, you aren't a frog. <laughs> look, look at me. I am me. I am myself. I am I. Eve, oh, and I'm Mario. It's Oh, there, there, darling. Never mind. I love you. And you, and you, and you, and, and you too. All of you. And especially you. And as the, as the wise old man once said... They all lived happily ever after. <laughs>